Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike, and today I'll be showing you two methods to connect your Oculus Quest 2 to a PC to play full PC VR games from both Oculus and Steam VR. You see, the Oculus Quest 2 is a great standalone VR headset, and to be clear, you don't need a PC to use it, as you can download games directly to and play them directly from the headset itself. However, if you happen to have a powerful gaming PC, you also have the opportunity to use it as a PC VR headset to play some amazing VR titles on PC, such as Lone Echo and Half-Life Alex. And you also have some amazing games coming soon, such as Star Wars Squadrons and Medal of Honor. So in this video, I'll be going over the equipment that you'll need, along with the recommended PC specs, and I'll cover two connection methods. One is using a cable using Oculus Link, and the other is completely wireless using a Wi-Fi connection and an app called Virtual Desktop. Please note though that this is very early testing of both of these methods with the Quest 2 as the headset hasn't even been released to the public yet. So both Oculus Link and Virtual Desktop will be getting significant updates soon to take full advantage of the Quest 2's higher resolution and 90 hertz capability. Of course, I'll be keeping you all updated with the changes, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel for all my future Oculus Quest 2 content. I hope you find the video interesting, and without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so before we get into the two methods, firstly and most importantly, you'll need a Windows 10 gaming PC for this to work. Oculus state the recommended specs are an Intel i5-4590 or AMD Ryzen 5 1500X processor or higher, paired with 8GB of memory and at minimum an NVIDIA GTX 970 or AMD 400 series graphics card. If you don't have a PC at home, you may be able to use a cloud PC from a company like Shadow to stream all the content remotely, but this is very experimental right now and I'll be covering this in a full dedicated video in the near future. Now the first connection method I want to talk about is the simplest method and that is using a USB-C cable to connect the headset to your PC using Oculus Link. And there's two cables that I would recommend. Firstly, you have the official Oculus Link cable from Oculus themselves and this is a 5 meter right angle USB-C to USB-C cable. It's quite pricey at 79 US dollars or 89 British pounds, but it's a fiber optic cable, meaning that it's lightweight and flexible. It also uses USB 3.2, so it has a high data bandwidth and it charges the Quest 2 at the same time during play. Although please note the battery still does decrease, albeit very slowly. The latest version of the official Oculus Link cable now ships with a Velcro clip, so it can be used on any of the Quest 2's head straps to keep the cable out of your way whilst you're playing. The second cable I would recommend is an Anchor USB-C cable in combination with the Cable Creations USB extension cable. When both are combined, it'll give you an eight meter cable length in total. This combo is much cheaper than the official cable at around 36 US dollars, and it's a great option if your PC doesn't have a USB-C port. However, just be aware it won't charge the headset during use as efficiently as the official cable, so just bear that in mind. Once you have a compatible Oculus Link cable, all you need to do is have the Oculus Desktop app installed on your PC and connect the cable to your Quest 2. You'll get a notification in the headset to enable Oculus Link and you're pretty much good to go to play PC VR content from Oculus such as Lone Echo, Onward, Stormland and Asgard's Wrath. If you want to play Steam VR content, then you'll need to have Steam VR beta installed in Steam and have both the Oculus and Steam VR software running at the same time. But once you've got that set up, you'll have access to a whole library of Steam VR content, including excellent titles such as Boneworks and Half-Life Alex. The graphical fidelity of games on PC is much, much greater than what is possible natively on the Oculus Quest 2 and pretty mind blowing the first time you try it. So if you have access to a PC, I'd highly recommend it. At the moment in my testing, Oculus Link works great with Quest 2, although it's still using the same settings for Oculus Quest 1. So it's capped at a lower resolution and still runs at 72 Hertz. I expect this to be improved soon when Oculus Link comes out of beta, and then we'll see an increase in performance taking full advantage of the Quest 2's 1832 by 1920 resolution per eye, and the ability to run games at 90 hertz. The main benefit of using the cable method is that it keeps the headset topped up during play, but the downside is that at times whilst playing, you can kind of get tied up in the cable. 
And this brings me nicely onto the second method, which I think is way more exciting as it's completely wireless using an application called Virtual Desktop and a Wi-Fi connection. On top of the PC requirements I mentioned earlier, you'll also need a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection for the smoothest experience. The Oculus Quest 2 also supports Wi-Fi 6, so if you happen to have a Wi-Fi 6 certified router, you can get even faster speeds, and it's also more efficient at sharing the bandwidth in households with multiple wireless devices. I've been testing the Quest 2 with a Wi-Fi 6 router, and the one I've been testing is the Asus RT-AX86U, which I've linked in the description down below if you're interested. Using this router with virtual desktop, I was able to cap out at a whopping 1200 megabits per second. On my previous 5 gigahertz router from TP-Link, I would cap out at 866 megabits per second. So although Wi-Fi 6 provides a nice performance boost, I wouldn't say it's essential right now as virtual desktop doesn't take full advantage of these higher speeds yet, and 5 gigahertz will still work just fine. To get this to work, you'll need to buy a virtual desktop, which is 20 US dollars from the Oculus Quest store. Then you'll need to install the PC VR streaming patch for Virtual Desktop, which you have to sideload using SideQuest. I won't go into how to sideload content to keep this video brief, but there's a full guide on how to do it on the channel for Quest 1, and the principles for Quest 2 are exactly the same. I've also added a link to SideQuest in the description down below. Once that's set, you'll need to install the Virtual Desktop streaming app on your PC, and after that it's super simple. Just run the Virtual Desktop app in the headset and you can access games from both Oculus and Steam VR directly from the Virtual Desktop menu. I've been testing an early experimental build of Virtual Desktop running at 90Hz with an increase in resolution to take advantage of the Quest 2's displays and I can honestly say it's totally awesome. Tyrael Wood and I have been testing this out for Virtual Desktop so hopefully this update will be ready for when the Quest 2 releases to the public. Playing games like Half-Life Alex completely wirelessly with Quest 2 is actually pretty incredible. And I can't wait for those of you out there that use Virtual Desktop with Quest 1 to see the improvements using it with Quest 2. The huge benefit of this method is of course that you're completely wireless. And it's amazing to think that wireless add-on solutions for other headsets like the HTC Vive and Vive Pro are pretty much the same price as the Quest 2 headset itself. And yet it can do wireless PC VR out of the box. The big downside, of course, is battery life. The Quest 2's battery will roughly last around two hours worth of wireless gaming, but if this is your preferred method, I would consider buying an Elite battery strap from Oculus or a third-party external USB-C power pack to increase your playtime. Out of the two methods I've described in this video, personally, I prefer to use the wireless method using virtual desktop and a Wi-Fi connection, as being wireless in VR is extremely liberating, and it feels awesome to play full PC VR titles whilst being able to freely move around your play space. In terms of performance, virtual desktop has the slight edge at the moment as it's running at 90 hertz and at a higher resolution to take advantage of the Quest 2's higher resolution displays. However, like I said at the beginning of the video, it won't be long before Oculus Link comes out of beta and will also take advantage of the higher resolution and 90Hz capability of the Quest 2. So ultimately, both methods will be on par with each other in the future, so it will come down to your own personal preference and your budget. Okay, so that's how to connect the Quest 2 to a PC to unlock a whole new library of content from both Oculus and Steam VR. Now, I've been getting asked a lot how does the Oculus Quest 2 using Link or Virtual Desktop compare to, say, the Oculus Rift S? Well, I would say right now I find the field of view on Quest to be slightly wider than the Rift S due to the lenses being closer to my eyes and my IPD setting at setting 2. And from what I've seen with my testing of an experimental build of Virtual Desktop running at 90Hz with a nice bump in resolution, it surpasses the Rift S in terms of visual quality and performance with the additional bonus of being completely wireless. If you want a real in-depth look through the lenses of both the Rift S and Quest 2 for comparison, you should go and check out my friend Tyrell Wood's excellent Through the Lenses video, which I'll link up here now and in the description down below. It's an awesome video, go check it out. But it's pretty crazy that the Quest 2 is such a capable PC VR headset, especially at this price point. I mean, you could buy a brand new RTX 3080 graphics card and a Quest 2 for the price of a Valve Index. It's pretty amazing. I'm going to be using the Quest 2 to play the latest Star Wars Squadrons game later this week on PC using a full hands-on throttle and stick setup. 
so make sure you stay tuned for that as you definitely won't want to miss it. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you excited to play PC VR content with the Quest 2? Or maybe you don't have access to a gaming PC, but you're interested to see how the functionality works. Or maybe this has got you looking at gaming PCs now that you know this functionality is possible. I'd love to know all your thoughts in the comments down below. Leave a like if you liked the video and you found it interesting. Make sure you subscribe for all my future Oculus Quest 2 content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.